Well, hello everyone and welcome to Dementia Unplugged. I'm Janine Forrest and I am thrilled that you are able to take time out of your busy schedules to spend uh, learning about normal aging and cognitive functioning versus the early signs of dementia. Uh, quite often I get the question, oh my goodness, I keep losing my keys. Uh, I keep losing my car. Do I have dementia? So we're going to explore uh, some of those questions and uh, the rationale, or if you need to um, find additional help. So let's get the conversation started. Um, I do want to start out with a message from our uh, president, Kevin Jameson from the Dementia Society of America, and take a moment to listen. Welcome. Please listen to this important message from the Dementia Society of America. All content, including any potential medical information, is provided as an informational resource only and is not to be used or relied on for any diagnostic or treatment process. It should not be used as a substitute for professional diagnosis, care, and treatment. Please consult your health care provider before making any health care decisions or for guidance about a specific medical condition. The opinions expressed and the content shared by Dr. Forrest are not necessarily of the opinions and content of the Dementia Society of America. Thank you. Just a, a, a little information about the format if you're new uh, to this webcast. I talk about 30 minutes on the particular subject and then we open it up to uh, Q&A that can be entered on, on your computer. Uh, this information is also recorded and so you can listen at future dates and it's also available on YouTube. I like to start out uh, just giving people a little bit of background on what we mean by dementia. Certainly I'm going to talk a little more in depth uh, given the nature of this particular program and in future slides. But right now, I want you to understand that the word dementia is really just in an umbrella term, meaning it's a set of a variety of, of, of different conditions and within this umbrella, there are many, many types of, of dementias. Uh, the most common that you probably hear of are Alzheimer's related dementia, vascular, uh, can be Lewy body, frontal temporal dementia, but it is this umbrella term meaning dementia that means that there's changes in cognitive functioning over time. And so uh, the word dementia is not a, a disease in and of itself. It's just a term. Okay, an umbrella term. So talking about cognitive functioning, I wanna start out by saying, my goodness, there has been an, uh, an enormous amount of brain research really starting probably in about 2013 uh, looking at uh, how our aging society is really experiencing uh, more awareness, uh, more sensitivity uh, to the importance of when the brain certainly does not work um, as expected. And so when you get an opportunity, uh, take a look at a particular website called the braininitiative.org. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fascinating place that really works towards the discovery of how the circuitry, the neural networks of our brain um, process information, retrieve information, store information. It looks at our emotions. It looks at pathology and mental health. 
And so it's, it's, a, it's certainly a wealth of information uh, looking at how uh, the brain is um, really just uh, embryonically un, un, understood. Uh, we have so much more to learn when it comes to the brain. And so that's why I'm calling it the new frontier. But for our purposes today, I want to really narrow our field to talk about cognitive functions. And what are they? Let me give you an example of what I mean by cognitive functioning. That includes things like learning, remembering, our ability to speak and understand language, reasoning, problem solving, decision making, the ability to pay attention. When our brains are working correctly, uh, boy, we take so many things for granted. But when you think about it, which is another uh, real uh, amazing thing that we have the ability to think about our thinking, um, this really underscores why it's important to understand the complexity and have gratitude uh, when we do have uh, cognitive functions that work well. So how does cognitive function or how do cognitive functions change over time from early age to older, much older adult. The term for normal aging is senescence. Senescence. That means normal aging changes. So what do we know about how the brains change from perhaps early adulthood until later in life? What we're learning is that if you look inside the cranium and look inside our brains, there is a general thinning of the cortex and some shrinkage that actually begins about the age of 30 and continues. And it speeds up perhaps around the age of 60. Now, there's not total shrinkage. This is just something that we commonly have found in our discoveries of, of neuroanatomy and brain changes. But uh, who knows? Uh, the, the jury is out on whether these types of changes are now even considered normal or are they sort of the prodromal or beginning stages of, of perhaps a dementia. Um, we still have a lot to learn, but needless to say, what we're coining normal senescent changes right now, um, the underlying brain structures show a thinning of the cortex, especially the frontal lobe, uh, which is the lobe that develops last in our brain development. And that's responsible for things like, like planning and abstract thinking. Uh, and there is general shrinkage. And that again uh, starts at the age of 30 and escalates about the age of 60 and onward. Now, I don't want to um, paint an overall negative picture because there is a lot of good news that we're learning. And there's this concept called neuroplasticity. And what that means is that the, the nerve cells in our brains called neurons actually have the opportunity to improve in terms of communication and networking. So we are learning that neuroplasticity is a lifelong process that allows our nerve cells to change structure and function. The word is, you know, the jury is still out on whether we are developing brand new brain cells. There's a lot of mix in the research. But overall, what we do know is that as we get older, 
we have the opportunity to improve communication and networking among the neurons. And that shows up um, in our ability, particularly our verbal abilities and our ability to understand big picture thinking. And I'll, I'll talk about that in more detail in a moment. So what I'm hoping you're hearing is that it's not all downhill after the age of 30. Um, there is a lot of growth um, and a lot of potential to strengthen our cognitive functions. So based on current understanding, what are the senescent changes that we are seeing and that you may be experiencing yourself uh, in terms of decline or slowing? I want to highlight the words decline and slowing. It does not mean stopping, okay? Uh, so there's a tendency to have more difficulty storing new information into memory. It takes a little longer, it takes more repetition to store new information into memory. Also, uh, what's called declarative memory, which means the accumulation of new knowledge, that can still happen but it takes longer because it takes longer to store information. Uh, that's the function of our hippocampus, which is about the size of a walnut. Our hippocampus is responsible for, for storing new information. So it takes longer and the ability to really retrieve and declare this new information is a little slower. Another piece that may show some decline is holding pieces, multiple pieces of information at the same time. Um, an example of this would be holding on to a password uh, or holding on to a new locker combination. That takes a little more repetition and the information could easily just disappear. Maybe you've experienced that, but that's a normal, according to our current understanding, changes that occurs with aging. Problem solving, the speed of problem solving. We can still problem solve, but the speed of that process takes a little bit longer to find the answer. So if you give ourselves more time, don't become anxious, don't allow competing uh, other distractions to happen at the same time, the problem solving will take place. Another one is a, the ability to pay attention, multitasking. That is totally overrated, especially in our you know, highly driven society. As we age, it becomes more difficult to multitask. And the more stressed you become about that, the worse it gets. So just know that in, in general, it takes a little longer and perhaps it's more important to focus on one thing at a time. And then you can more easily store that new information so that you can retrieve it later. All right, what stays the same or improves? What we're learning is that this concept called procedural memory stays the same or improves. So for example, um, the ability to, to ride a bike, to swim, to tie your shoe, things that you've learned to do from uh, early childhood onward, that stays the same or should stay the same. Our verbal, as I'm, as I'm messing that word, uh, our verbal abilities improve. Um, we can expand our vocabulary, our ability to understand language improves. Abstract thinking, taking information and that may be less related and putting it together, um, that improves or at least stays the same. And lastly, our ability to see the big picture certainly improves over time. Some people might call that wisdom, 
we become wiser. We may not remember all of the details, but we can understand the significance and the meaning in the bigger picture. So I want to reemphasize that growing older, senescent changes aren't all bad. Uh, there are certainly things that age well, like a good wine. What can impair cognitive and functioning? Uh, our brains are very sensitive and they're hidden be behind our cranium and things can go wrong. So it's really important to learn or we're learning how important it is to take good care of our brains, just like we take or try to take good care of our heart and the rest of our bodies, the brain is certainly connected. So what can impair cognitive functioning? It is poor sleep, getting less than seven or eight hours an evening consistently can impair cognitive functioning. Infections, as a matter of fact, Older adults, especially over the age of 65, who develop um, infections, bladder infections, one of the first telltale signs that something is happening is a change in mental status. They may not, not even mount a fever, but something is, there's a, a confusion that's starting. Uh, medications, uh, multiple medications, people who take five or more medications a day and depending on what they are, have a tendency to have, could be cognitively impaired or uh, develop some sensitivity. Alcohol abuse. Uh, if there's a lack of oxygen to the brain, certainly if there's a respiratory disease, people's awareness and level of consciousness can change based upon levels of oxygen to the brain. Diabetes, heart disease, anything that could potentially narrow the blood vessels, particularly capillaries to the brain, and narrow that blood flow can cause changes in cognitive functioning. That includes smoking, tumors, head trauma from falls, uh, concussions. In addition, poor nutrition and dehydration can cause changes in mental status and impair cognitive functioning. You'll notice I leave dementia as one of the last reasons that one has a change in cognitive functioning. Um, and we're gonna explore that, that concept now. I hope you appreciate that there are many, many different underlying etiologies or other conditions that can impair cognitive functioning. So when people say, oh my goodness, I can't find my keys, um, you know, once in a while, that's absolutely fine. It may be that we're not paying attention. Um, it may be we didn't get enough sleep. It may be we drank too much alcohol the night before. It doesn't always mean that there's a dementia taking place. But then what is a dementia? Again, it's a collection of symptoms that significantly impair cognitive function and impacts every, you know, normal everyday activities and relationships. This is a distinction. I want you to highlight the fact that dementia impairs and impacts normal everyday activities and relationships. In order to be diagnosed with a dementia, when uh, healthcare providers, physicians really look at all the information, we're looking at two or more brain functions that are impaired over time. And typically, many of the dementias are irreversible and progressive and unfortunately fatal at this time. I want to stress that dementia is not, I repeat, not a normal part of aging. Uh, it's common, it's, it, it seems very common, 
uh, because more and more people are, are living longer and age seems to be one of the major risk factors for developing a dementia that we don't quite understand yet, but it's not considered a normal part of aging. Uh, we used to call things like organic brain syndrome or senility or that person's just old. Uh, those are uh, the myths and um, stereotypes that I really hope that we have a, uh, an opportunity to dismiss. I repeat that dementia is not a disease, not the word dementia itself. Memory loss alone is not dementia. It takes changes in uh, two or more cognitive functions before someone is diagnosed with a dementia. So having memory loss alone, it may be a concern. Uh, we'll talk in a moment about the fact that memory loss may be uh, an early sign, but it not alone, it's not exclusive. I show a picture of the umbrella again. The reason I'm doing that is to have you understand that there are numerous types of dementias. The last I read is that some scientists have identified 400 different types of dementias, 400. Um, each one of these dementias impacts the individual in different ways and has different causes. So earlier signs uh, look a little bit different and getting a history of how the person functions in the world and relates in the world is part of the process that is used when someone is undergoing evaluation. So for example, on Alzheimer's dementia, yes, uh, short-term memory loss seems to be a hallmark. Whereas someone with Lewy body dementia, memory loss is not exactly uh, a predominant symptom. They may have exaggerated dreams. People with frontal temporal dementia may have something uh, akin to change in personality. And then we can go on. There's vascular dementia, uh, Parkinson's related dementia, HIV related dementia. I don't have the time to go through 400 different um, reasons for a dementia, but I hope you're getting a better picture. And this may also help to us to understand why it's so difficult to find a cure. Uh, we have a long way to go, and so we can't just clump all the dementias um, into, you know, into one umbrella. I'm showing a picture of various MRIs. The reason I'm doing that with different types of dementias is to reinforce the fact that our brains are changing when a dementia is, in fact, diagnosed. And we don't see this these changes are subtle and the person looks just fine and quote normal from the outside. But in fact, there is, <coughs> excuse me, more dramatic uh, brain changes um, happening inside. And if we are the care providers, the caregivers, the care partners, it's so important for us to understand that these changes are taking place. The person isn't just giving us a hard time. They're not just making this up. Uh, people have no real control when there are pathologic changes occurring within the brain. It's up to us as the care partners to learn how to respond and care for someone uh, in a different and new way. All right, that said, given that background, I want to talk about the early signs of dementia. Not one of these is, means that, oh my goodness, I have dementia. Uh, we really have to look at 
uh, the impact it takes on daily living and how it impairs daily functioning and relationships. So for example, forgetting that impairs daily functioning and relationships. Uh, you know, forgetting someone's name on occasion, forgetting where we put our keys, forgetting why we walked into a room. Uh, I often say that's because we're, we're, we're trying to multitask and not paying attention. But it's the person who now asks the same question five times in a row. What are we doing today? Um, asking uh, if I took my medication. Um, asking uh, the same question over and over and over again without any insight into the fact that they asked it in the first place. Uh, this is frustrating to certainly the relationships and it certainly um, impairs daily functioning if you don't know what to do next. That's the type of forgetting that I'm talking about. Another early sign is problem with planning or initiating plans. So not knowing uh, someone who used to be an amazing cook or baker now no longer knows how to uh, follow the next step or you know, cook as well as they used to or working uh, in knowing how to use the washing machine. Uh, stuff are problems initiating plans. So they used to be a great party planner and now no parties are planned at all. Uh, there could be an element of a depression that's involved and that's why it's so important to be screened. Uh, I'm gonna give you the early signs, but don't, I don't want everyone to be frightened. That's why it's important to get a whole full comprehensive medical screening to rule out some of those other reasons that might be impairing cognitive functioning. One of the other things I didn't talk about is um, hypothyroidism, uh, particularly in women. If the thyroid isn't working, uh, there is a slowing of, of, of thinking. It's almost like um, uh, living in a fog or molasses. And so that once the thyroid is corrected and you're often given a particular medication, called Synthroid, that, that fogginess goes away. Uh, all right, other early signs of dementia. Getting lost in familiar places. So going to the same grocery store for 30 years and now not remembering how to get home. Problems with keeping time. Uh, you know, being a late on occasion for an appointment may happen, but a consistent, uh, problem in tracking time and being on time and knowing how long it takes to get up in the morning, get dressed, take a shower, eat and be ready and available to do what you had committed to, uh, that starts to dissolve. Problems with words and language. So yes, we've all had the experience of trying to find that right word or remembering that person's name but when it becomes uh, really uh, happening on a daily basis uh, and not recognizing perhaps the face of that person. Seeing things that are not there, this is called hallucination. And it, we may distort figures or shadows, but if, if typically the person with the beginning dementia may not have the insight that these things are happening, but other people, uh, your loved ones, uh, can recognize when you're more easily frightened by, by visions or objects that don't exist. We may be unable, or the person with early signs of dementia, may be unable to control emotions or become much more easily agitated. Uh, in the past, they've been sort of low key, even keeled, uh, and now things seem to upset them to more extreme, um, you know, sort of limits. Personalities may change for better or worse. 
the person may become more docile or become much more angry and irritable. For some, there may be a, a impair, an impaired balance or impairment in walking. Remember that the brain not only contains our cognitive functions, but the brain controls all of our motor functions as well. Our ability to walk, our ability to talk, our ability to control our bat, bladder and, and bowel, um, ultimately our ability to swallow. But in the early stages, uh, we're now seeing uh, some correlation with changes in gait. Judgment can be poor. So the person who goes out in their underwear and, and it's 30 below uh, and snowing and thinking that's just fine. Uh, the person who doesn't understand that they're at risk for falling and consistently tries to get um, out of their, their chair. Uh, the person who um, spends all of their money uh, buying online gifts uh, and uh, is unable to kind of keep track of that. Um, so judgment is poor. Losing things and not being able to retrace steps. So I, I, I talk about the key uh, issue. It could be anything. Certainly we've all lose objects, uh, lose our purse, lose my cell phone. My goodness, that happens more than I care uh, to report. But that said, if when you take the time, um, you can retrace your steps and eventually find it. People with early signs of dementia have a very difficult time retracing steps. And because of this, uh, another a uh, key indicator is some people become suspicious and accuse people of stealing. So if I can't find my purse and I can't retrace my steps, aha, that means that someone must have stolen my purse. And so suspicion and paranoia seem to take over. Individuals may become more withdrawn from social circles. It becomes much more difficult to pay attention to conversation, to keep up. Perhaps you played bridge and uh, now that uh, sort of that abstract thinking, the ability to put together numbers and process information quickly doesn't happen. And so so the individual with early signs of dementia starts to withdraw from that social circle. And that's linked to becoming less engaged in hobbies. <clears throat> so not knowing what to do, the next steps, it becomes too much pressure, too anxiety provoking to take place, you know, take part in hobbies that uh, normally would come much more easily. But, but in fact, that adds a stressor and the parts of our brain that we take for granted in being able uh, to play cards, to play board games, uh, really tax our cognitive functions. And so you're seeing someone much less engaged. Now certainly this list is not exhaustive but it gives you a sense of what we're looking for and the degree, the degree of impact on daily functioning. When all of this happens or any parts of these happen and um, you know, it's important to pay attention to the degree and the frequency so in fact, if, if that's happening to you or a loved one, I'm going to encourage you to contact your healthcare provider for an evaluation. As I said earlier, it's important to rule out any underlying medical condition that may mimic a dementia or in fact, 
if some of those medical conditions are not ruled out, then the next step is to go for a much you know, fuller and much more comprehensive uh, evaluation to find out if a type of dementia exists. Um, and it is important to find out the type because each one um, has different pathology within the brain. Uh, we're learning that different medications uh, respond differently uh, for people with various types of dementias. And it's also important for care providers to know how to respond and care with you and care for you in various manners, depending upon the remaining cognitive abilities that exist. So we can't assume that everyone with a dementia has a memory problem. Um, and if we put everyone into that similar category or that box, that can cause a lot of future um, difficulties with relationships. And so if we do want to improve the quality of life with people with dementia, it's so important to get that evaluation and for not only the person, but their loved ones to learn about the most they can about the type of dementia and how to respond appropriately. So I hope that gives you some sense of the difference um, of age-related, senescent-related changes and how that differs from someone with a dementia. We're learning how to care before finding the, quote, cures. Uh, most likely won't be just one, you know, one pill, one vaccination. As you can see from this particular program, there are many, many factors that underlie the various dementias. And so intuitively, it makes sense that there'll be a variety of cures. If any of you would like more of a one-to-one -one consultation, certainly you can reach out to me and call at 773-704-1834. My private practice is called Through the Forest, and that's the name of my website, www.throughtheforestwith2rs.com. I want to thank the Dementia Society of America for supporting Dementia Unplugged and uh, really sharing this information. I would encourage each and every one of you to take a look at that amazing website and all the resources and consider donating as well. All right, I'm going to re end the recording at this point uh, in order to preserve sort of the confidentiality of people who send in the questions. And I will do that now. While I'm doing so, please feel free to send in your questions.